Hello, I'm Jude Scott and I've been asked by several students to put together something about how best to control the paint and the water with your brush. And I think um, when you're first starting out, or even if you've been painting for a while, sometimes you really need to go back to the basics. So that's what I'm going to do today. So let's get started. So here I have my water. I have a great big container of water. You need to have lots of water, I feel, to rinse your brushes clean every time you want to pick up fresh paint. I have um, a sponge. This is a car wash sponge. It holds a load of water and you need something to dry your paint brushes on. If your paint brush is dripping wet, it just won't work. The wetter the water, or the more water that you use, the more it will dilute the paint when it goes on your paper. And when it dries, instead of drying dark, it will dry light. Okay, next thing is my brush. I've got a beautiful calligraphy brush, which I love. Um, it holds a lot of water. And sometimes that can be a little bit of a trap if you're not used to using um, a lot of water. So you even need to be more mindful of um, getting the right amount of water in your brush. So always rinse your brush first, dry it on the edge of your bucket, and then mix up, uh, I put a little bit of water in there. I'm going to use Prussian Blue because it's a very easy colour, very quick to pick up and get a super dark. So there's my Prussian blue. So, and keep the paints in your palette damp. If they dry out, you can't pick up paints easily. So I find um, when I go to demonstrate to a student, if they've got a palette that's got pans of paint in, you just can't pick up anything on the tip of your brush to mix it up quickly. So if your brushes are looking dry, mine are dry today because it's been very hot here, just give them a spray with a, a mister bottle and that water will sink in and it'll reconstitute your watercolours and they'll be really easy to use. So the first thing you need to do is to learn how to apply some paint on the paper. Now, I always say if you want it dark, don't use too much water, but you need enough pigment to um, make a little bit more pigment. I want to make that super dark. Okay, so there we go. That is a number five tonal value in Prussian blue. So that's a number five. Now to make that a little bit lighter, we don't add white. Just pick up on the tip of your brush a bit more water. I've wiped out the excess paint back there. So make this one a little bit lighter. Now I've taken out too much paint, so that's okay. Just put some more paint on and you can see straight away that that's a whole lot lighter. So for the middle one, pick up some more paint, sorry, some more water and go for the number three. So here I'm painting with the tip of the brush. I often paint with the flat of the brush, but for here it's the tip. So you can see it's very dark, medium dark, and that is lighter. So then this number here, number two, is the hardest one because number one is always unpainted paper. You'll never get lighter than that in watercolour because nothing will be as fresh and as white as unpainted paper. So this tone needs to be halfway between that and unpainted paper. So at this stage I give my brush a little rinse, dry it off well there on the sponge and then put your brush down and you can see that's still pretty dark. So add a little bit of water. And there we have five tones of colour. 
so 54321 and the one will remain unpainted paper okay so there we go that is the first lesson if you can do that you will be able to paint anything okay now that you've done your tonal values the next thing you can do is what's called a graded wash so we put really dark paint down as if we're going to perhaps do a long narrow sky rinse your brush off dry it a little bit and then get that paint to bleed down the paper overlap your brush this works better if it's on a bit of an angle but you can see if you overlap you won't get any stripes in your sky. Just go from side to side and again you'll come right down to white paper. If that was on an angle that would bleed more down the paper which is fantastic that's what you want. So have a go at practicing those and then when you feel confident at doing that water there and block that off you can try bleed, blending colors into one another so for example here is very strong and very wet Prussian blue now if I want to turn that into a green rinse your brush really well take out the excess water and I'll get some quinacridone gold that's a beautiful colour in Holbein. These are all Holbein colours, by the way. So nice, rich, strong quinacridone gold. It looks like brown in the paint box, but it's beautiful yellow. And just overlap that yellow into the blue and then come down your paper. And you will see that that will start to drift down. I'll put that on just a bit more of an angle and touch a little bit more glue into that. If you splatter something on, you can always lift off the pigment with the tip of your brush. <clears throat> so if I tilt that paper, you can get the most beautiful green. Or if you're painting on an angle, it's much easier. It's a little bit difficult to film that here. But there you have a really beautiful green. Um, you can go from that colour more to a yellow. I'll add a little bit of aureole and yellow to that quinacridone gold. And again overlap your pigment and just drag that down your paper. And again you can see how I've faded that out so there's almost nothing, no pigment left in that end section. So I've gone from phthalo blue to quinacridone gold and then to aureole and yellow and it's a graded wash. Um, you can do the same with your reds. So a nice, make sure your paint is nice and juicy you can't if it won't flow easily over the surface of your paper like that it means that you haven't got enough water so rinse rinse your brush well and overlap otherwise you'll get a mark so this time we can bring it down the paper you can see that Holbein quinacridone red is the most beautiful cool red so what if we want to warm that up okay Let's get some quinacridone gold. We'll use this mix that we had before, which is aureole and yellow and quinacridone gold. And with a fairly little bit more water, add that into that quinacridone red. I'll have to overlap it a little bit further and get it to come down the paper. And again, you can fade that right out to just unpainted paper. So here we have something interesting that's happened. And I'll just see if I can get to show you this. Okay, against the light, 
if you want to know if your paint is wet see how that's shining the blue green is shining the red it stops the shine stops just there if you put wet paint into that you will get what's called cauliflower or some people even call them vegetables you'll get a really hard jagged edge now there's a place for those but you might not want it perhaps in a landscape so you have to be just aware that this paint here must be as damp as that paint there for it to blend on the paper if it isn't you're going to get these hard edges okay so I'll show you that again I'll mix up some quinacridone red and that's nice and juicy I'll put a little bit more water with that and I'll mix up some quinacridone gold and some aureole and yellow and I'll put a bit more water with that and overlap so that the yellow paint is as wet as the red and then you can easily bring that down the paper and you can take it right down so that there's nothing there, no colour at all. Okay, so then you've got a lovely, um, this actually looks quite a bit brighter than it is in reality, it's the screen that I'm looking at, but it's perfectly graded, whereas this one, because there was more water in this than there was in the yellow section, it's left a hard edge. Okay. So I'll just write there, dry brush and dry paper. Okay, so the next one is going to be wet brush on dry paper. So same tone exactly, I've got loads of water. So you can see how the difference is, that just skates across the surface of the paper. So that's wet brush. Dry paper. Okay. Um, now the next one is going to be dry brush into wet paper. So I'm just going to do a square just with water not too much water just to dampen the surface of the paper so that it's shiny wet now I have to mention here if the surface of your paper is shiny wet you can do anything you can drop color in you can lift color out you can add subtract whatever you like so wet paper is great to work with so let's put some of that same color into wet paper and you can oh, I'll make that a little bit stronger sorry okay so here is a brush stroke that's gone into wet paper and you can see how you've got lovely soft edges and it will move if the, the wet of the paper the more that that pigment will move Okay, to show you the difference, I'll make this paper here super wet. So lots and lots of water. Okay. And you can see that that paint, if I tip the paper up, it will travel over the surface of the paper very very easily I love painting wet in wet like that um, it's not everybody's cup of tea but I love it now we'll do dry brush onto wet paper so you get very similar effects so these have now started to move across the surface of the paper If you wanted to say get light coming on the side of an object 
I think this is a very good exercise. So draw a circle. Pretty awful circle, but that will do. Okay, back to the Prussian blue. So, um, now your brush is rinsed clean, you've taken out the excess liquid, now with the tip of the brush go over that at least by 50% because you want to put a little bit of liquid into that paint and you want to smooth it out to almost nothing at the lowest edge of the circle. It could be the moon that you've just painted. Okay. And that is worth practicing. It's actually a little bit dry here. Danger zone. So there you've got really dark down to very light. Um, and I'll come back to that one in a moment. Um, another thing that is very interesting to learn is how to use your brush on roughish paper when it's a, a dry brush. So a dry brush is when, if you shake it, you can't get any pigment off, but you know I've just loaded that up with pigment and these brushes hold a lot of um, liquid, probably about a tablespoonful. So if that's a loaded brush but it's not wet and you take that across the surface of your paper, if you do it like that, it's very, uh, it gives you wonderful marks. Now if I put a little bit more water with that, because that was very dry, you can get the marks again. It was probably still a bit dry. So it's really handy to know how to do that. Say if you're going to paint an ocean, you can get the sparkle on the ocean like that. Um, very, very handy. You do need medium pressed or rough pressed paper for that. Okay, so I'll just hold that up a little bit. You might be able to see that more clearly. You can see how these marks here have got beautiful whispery spidery edges and these here are really, really clean cut and sharp edged. So now that you know how to do that um, and you cannot practice that too much when you're first new to painting watercolour, the next thing we want to do is um, we'll do a landscape. So I'm just going to use two colours. I'm going to use my burnt sienna which is this lovely rich orangey chocolatey brown and I'm going to, I've mixed that with um, Prussian blue. So we're going to paint the whole landscape in with one colour, but we're going to get five tones, okay? So the first stroke, I want to do a graded wash for the sky. So I'll start quite with quite a wet brush because I want the tones to merge together. So go right across your paper for the first stroke and I can come back a couple of times because that's really wet. If that wasn't really wet I couldn't do that. So now overlap 50%. So brush your brush again, dry it off a little bit and go back over that. Overlap by 50%. dropping water everywhere. Okay, so that's not moving down the paper like I would. So I'm just going to go back over it again and get that to move down the paper. 
so there we go that's my sky now we know that skies are not brown but it doesn't matter it could be a gray it's just that I want to show you how to do a very very simple landscape okay now I've talked before about when your paper's wet so you can see here you can still see the shine on the paper here that is very wet these are damp because they haven't completely dried this sky is wet at the top you can see it's shining and when that's still shining you can come in and you can add the next layer which to me will be the hills so this is where I came painted down to but I'm going up a little bit higher these are going to be my hills so as I come down I'm going to make that a little bit darker so that's quite dark so I need to put more water with my brush and keep that pigment so now using the tip of the brush I'm just scooting across that landscape come across more water I'm not rinsing the brush out totally I'm just adding more water so that it gets pale as I come down towards the bottom edge of the paper And there you've got a very, very simple um, landscape. So if you wanted to put some features in that landscape, um, the whole surface of that, I'll see if I can show you again, it is shiny wet. See how that's shining? I can add paint into that while it's that wet. Okay, so maybe you want to put some trees along here. It's always good to connect up your darks. And then you can put a little bit much brown in that. It's supposed to be all the same tone. So you might have run a nice dark shadow across that foreground there um, to give you a little bit of movement. So what else do we need to do to make that a little bit more interesting? Well, you could put some trees in there. So this is shiny wet, so if I touch Okay, I'll show you. If I touch um, something to there, say I'm going, thinking of doing some shrubbery in the foreground, that will have very soft edges. You can see how that that's going. Very, very soft. And they will probably almost disappear into um, the paint and the paper behind them will totally merge. But if I come here and do, say, some shrubbery, some sticks poking up there, I can go almost up to there because that paper's dry. It's damp there, but it's dry at the top. So because I haven't got much water on here and the point of the brush is super fine, I can get these lovely tree like marks, a little bit more shadow down there and you've got a very very simple very basic landscape but this is marvellous practice to have to do a very simple painting like that um, you cannot practice that enough I don't think 
Um, if you've got a good brush, you can't... Um, I, I find that I can't paint with a natural... Um, with a brush that doesn't have natural bristles. Synthetic bristles don't hold enough paint and they're just not flexible. You can do all sorts of wonderful things with these brushes. You can even get them and go like that. Sorry, you can't see that. And go like that and make trees and things, but that will be in another tutorial. So if you've got to this stage and you want some texture in the foreground, just sprinkle good old water and look at that. That is so simple and it's such fun to do. So thank you. I do hope that you've enjoyed the tutorials today and I look forward to seeing you again. Thanks for watching. Okay, I'll just go over this again. So that's the landscape and the marks that we've made with wet paint, dry paper, uh, thick dry brush and dry paper and then we've got the landscape and then these are the colors the exercises that we started with rather so you've got the tonal value scale just by adding water try a graded wash and when you can do that successfully then move on to grading colors mixing your colors so that they blend evenly on the paper and this is what you're after uh, not particularly this unless you're painting something that we particularly want um, a hard edge called a cauliflower or a vegetable so um, thanks for watching and i'll be back soon with some more tips and techniques